Hello, good morning. Welcome to our organization and management class. This is Mrs. Lori A. Develos, your OM teacher. So, last week, we discussed all about the different informations all about business. So, I hope that you still remember the SWOT or the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in a business, the different components, and then the different business opportunities. For this week, we're about to discuss the nature, levels, and types of planning. If I still remember, planning is one of the tasks of being a manager. So, ito na yon. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to discuss the nature and levels of planning and the different types of plans. For your learning task number one, this can be found on page 19 in your module. It says that do the following activities below in your answer sheet. Set number one, set goals or targets for a student like you. Give at least five goals or targets. So you as a student, give at least your five goals or targets in life. Look ahead. List possible future changes in your goals or targets that you made in number one. So, yun. Sa number one, lima, from that five, mag, maglalagay ka ngayon, ano ba mga posibleng pagbabago na pwedeng mangyari sa limang yon? So, yun. So, what is planning? Planning is the process of determining objectives and organizational goals, establishing strategies for accomplishments, those goals and developing, integrating, coordinated activities and the organizations to achieve those goals. So, meron kang goal. Pag sinabi mo na gusto kong makatapos ng pag-aaral, for example, hindi lamang basta ganun yun. Pagpaplanuhan mo ano ba ang pwede kong maging plano if that is my goal. Or let's say, for example, at the year 2027, dapat ay meron na akong trabaho. Goal yon or target mo yon. Paano mo ito pagpaplanuhan? It provides direction to all of the organization's human resources, managers and employees, and it reduces uncertainty, uncertainty and minimizes waste of time, effort and resources, and establishing goals and standards during planning may be used for controlling another managerial function. So, yon. Kailangan mong magplano. Sabi nga, sabi nga sa previous, it serve as a direction. No? Ano nga ba ang tinatahak mo sa negosyo mo? So, kung may plano ka, hindi ka daw magsasayang ng pera, ng oras, ng time, ng resources. So, yon. At pwede ka pang mag-proceed on the other managerial function. Without planning, goals and standards will not be present and controlling will not be possible since there will be no standard to compare or assess work effort with. So, yon Nagplano ka. 2027, dapat makatapos ako ng pag-aaral. 2021 ngayon, grade 11, grade 12, 2022. So, naandun yung standards dapat, ay, dapat hindi lang ako magkaroon ng grade na pasado. When I say pasado, 75. Kung kaya mong kumuha ng 90, 95, why not? No, kasama yun sa pagpaplano. Bakit? Especially when you reach your college education. Kasi, pag ikaw ay naghanap ng trabaho, ang tinitingnan po ay ang record mo sa college or ang transcript of records, papano kung ang grades mo kung hindi 3 ay 5. Kapag 5, bagsak. Kapag 3, 75. Dapat 1 or 2 ang grades mo. So, yun. How much more kung sa business? Kung maglalabas ka ng isang milyong puhunan, dapat may masinsinang pagpaplano kang gagawin. 
kasi hindi biro ang halaga ng pera niyo. What is the difference between goals and plans? Goals are targets that management desires to reach the desired results or objectives that members in an organization are pursuing. Samantalang ang plano or the plans are best described as steps and actions that are required to achieve goals. Pwede bang magkahiwalay ang dalawa? Hindi po. So, so kapag sinabi natin plano, ngayong 2021, magpuputap ako ng isang negosyo. Dapat by 2022, meron na akong tatlong branches. 2023, lima, 2024, sampo. Yun ang goal mo. Eto ang plano ko para ang sampung branches na yun ay magmaterialize. So, goals and plans cannot be separated from each other. What are the two types of plans? Ako, alam na alam nyo na to. Organizational plans can be generally described in terms of comprehensiveness, length of time covered or time frame, specificity, and frequency of use. And then, kapag sinabi nating organizational plans, pang matagalan, pang malakihan, Then, we have this what we call comprehensiveness. Refers to the completeness of planning, coverage like plans that cover the entire organization is called strategic plans. Up to operational plans that apply to a particular operational area only. The more comprehensive the plan, the better. So, yun. Kapag mas malaki daw, mas maganda. Mas maraming trabaho. Plans can be short term, which is good for one year or less. Or maybe long term, which is up to three years. Specificity refers to very detailed, clearly defined plans where objectives are clearly stated and could easily be understood. So kapag sinabi natin short term plan, one year pa ba ba? Kapag sinabi natin long term plan, one year and one month hanggang three years only. So, be specific sa mga dapat mong planuhin. Then, we have this what we call frequency of use. Refers to the number of times or instances a plan may be used. So, ilang beses mong kailangan gawin ang plano mong yun? Isa, dalawa, tatlo, hanggang ba sa ma-reach mo ang iyong target goals? Next, we have the strategic plans. Establish the organization's overall goals and apply to the entire team. The CEO, president, or the general manager of the firm are the one responsible for the scope of this plan which is broad in nature. So if you were a CEO or a president of a particular business, you have to have this what we call strategic plans. Papano or ano ang gagawin mo para mas angat ka sa mga kakompetensya mo sa negosyo. Next, operational plans are plans that apply only to a particular unit or area and narrow in scope. So, mas maliit kumpara sa strategic and organizational plans ang operational plans. Okay, long-term plans, we tackled it already, are plans that go beyond three years, while short-term plans are plans that cover a year or less. Directional plans are plans that are flexible or give general guidelines only. Then, specific plans are plans that are clearly stated and which have no room for interpretation. Language used must be simple and understandable. So, one example of directional plans. Sabi dito, plans that are flexible or give general guidelines only. So, ito yung sa mga empleyado. Pepwede ba siya? Yes, pepwede. No? Flexible. In specific plans. So, sa specific plans, if you're going to use it, see to it that you are using a simple and understandable language. Single-use plans are plans used or stated once or only as they apply to the entire organizations. Standing plans are plans that are ongoing or to the identified activities of operational plans. Okay, next, we have the steps in planning. So, may plano ka na kung paano mo gagawin at tatapusin. First, setting an organization's overarching mission and vision. 
So, kailangan ng mission and vision in an organization. Again, para alamin nyo kung ano yung landas na inyong pinatahak. Two, setting strategic goals and plans. Sabi, sabi ko na kanina, dapat meron kang strategy. Next, taking the strategic plans, goals and plans, and putting them into practice and everyday operations. So, hindi pwedeng plinano mo lang, then set aside. Put it into actions. Next, implementing and monitoring the goals and plans. Bakit kailangan ng ang monitoring? Nagplano ka, in-implement mo, bakit kailangan i-monitor? Para alam mo kung applicable, kung may epekto ba, kung maganda ba ang kahihinatnan. So, those are the steps in planning. Learning task 2, perform the task below in your answer sheet. It can be found on page 19 in your module. Choose one of the formal goals you have in the family. List down at least three operational plans that will enable you and your family to achieve this chosen goal. So, mamili ka, then mag maglagay ng tatlong operational plan. Describe how your family can effectively prepare the, opera the three operational plans Listed in number one. So, that's all for our week three. Congratulations everyone and enjoy answering the learning task and then the tagubilin and reflections.